Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the final chapter in our Risk Academy. This is on chapter 10 and this is about risk monitoring. Okay, first we're going to define what risk monitoring is and then we're going to sort of talk about how it fits in the uh, risk life cycle or a life cycle. Again, we talked about picking a framework. There's a different life cycle in each one of those frameworks um, associated with it, but this is sort of the life cycle we've talked about in the Risk Academy. Okay, so risk monitoring. What is that? There, here's the definition. It's the monitoring, assessing, evaluating, and reporting risk. What does this mean? Uh, in layman's terms, you have to keep an eagle eye on everything. This is not something that you just do one time. We talked about our risk register, which is an awesome management tool, but it's not something you fill out one time. Guess what? New risks happen all the time. Maybe a new vulnerability has happened in your systems that you need to record. Uh, a perfect example, drones. Drones are now extremely common and they're very easy for you to fly up and look in your window. What's on your window between you and your desk or on the whiteboards on your walls? Two years ago, we weren't so worried about drones. They were kind of a thing that, you know, they, okay, people knew about them. But now everybody has a drone and everybody can take pictures and what they can do is come right to your windows. So now you've got to think about, oh, that's a risk. They can look in our windows, what do we do? You weren't thinking about that two years ago. You better be thinking about it now. So literally, my definition of risk monitoring is keeping an eagle eye on it all the time. Constantly looking for new things, assessing, evaluating, evaluating your current systems, assessing is something else going to happen, monitoring what's there. And then obviously, because we work for someone else typically, we need to report that risk report that risk to our senior leadership or our risk managers. Or again, small organization, it might be two of you having that discussion. If this has come up, we need to address this. Okay, so let's talk about the risk management life cycle. There is a life cycle to this. First thing we do is identify our assets. Then we identify our risks. We categorize our risks. We figure out treatment options. Then we executed it, maybe using a risk register. All along the way here, we're constantly monitoring everything. We want to see how it's working. We want to be able to identify new things. Okay, I call it the rinse and repeat. This is a cycle that's rinsed and repeat, but you're monitoring along the way. So, for example, one of the things you want to monitor is maybe a control we put in place. A control is a treatment, something you put in treatment-wise, typically an IT type of that stuff. Maybe put old fi a firewall in. That firewall is not going to last forever. At some point, that risk level in that firewall goes up because I'll now all of a sudden maybe the vendor's not giving you any patches for it. And so you're stuck with the firewall that has known security patches in it. Well, that risk that was low before now pumps, bumps up. So you have to constantly monitor everything, including the stuff you put in place, to make sure you are covered if something should happen. Again, we're trying to find the total pie that we have here of risk. We're trying to identify things and fix them first. We want to find them ourselves and address them ourselves long before anybody else ever does and takes advantage of us. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the Risk Academy. So I sort of wanted to review and show you how I broke these out because there was an actual way that I wanted to do this. So first we talked about what a risk management program actually was, the purpose of a risk management program. Then we got into the governance, the structure you have to set up from the top down to sort of make that happen. We talked about the difference between a program versus the process versus analyzing or the analysis of individual risks. These are what most people get confused and they'll use these terms interchangeably and they're not. 
um, so you can kind of have some clarity over the pro whole program, the process to use, and how to analyze a risk. And we touched upon the fact that healthcare has specific issues with risk frameworks. They don't address everything. The High Trust Alliance is working on a framework. It's a risk-based framework that applies to healthcare, which does work well, but it is very complex. It has taken the sort of the best of everybody else's frameworks and added a few things HIPAA specific in there. Uh, mental health specific things are in there, for example. So that healthcare issues with risk frameworks, knowing you have to choose some way that is a sort of uh, framework is a structured way to get this accomplished, that you have to pick one of them. So you'll need to do these. This first block of four are literally the building blocks on how to get it put into your organization. We're going to go over the next set, and they are actually about how to find out what's a risk and identify it, categorize it, uh, treat it, and those things. So we get from the actual programs and to start talking about risks next. So our first four chapters in the Risk Academy were about the basic structure of how to put the program in place in your organization. The next four chapters are actually the four critical components for you to be able to address a risk. The first one, let's find out what our assets are, the things we need to protect. You have to identify them, quantify them, prioritize them. Then how to find risks. What's the likelihood something's going to happen? And then the impact if it actually does happen. Uh, that's sort of the best description of risk. They can talk about threats and vulnerabilities and any combination thereof. To me, I like it. It's easier to understand. What's the likelihood this is actually going to happen? And what's the damage or the impact if it does? Then we talked about different ways of categorizing risk. Quantity or quantitative versus quality or qualitative risk. Quantitative, we try to get to something called an annualized loss expectancy, a dollar figure, neutral dollars, versus a qualitative risk, somebody's best guess, your subject matter expert's best guess. Um, you know, sometimes you list it as low, medium, high, low, medium, high, critical, and we sort of talked about that semi-qualitative where you rank everything on a scale of one to five, one to 10, and you kind of come out with a number from there. Uh, so again, that's about categorizing your risks. This helps you identify the things that are most important to address first. And the last piece of these is how do you treat a risk? What are you know, the four options? We can either accept it, we can transfer it to somebody, typically with insurance, we can remove it, get rid of the asset altogether, or we can actually mitigate it, which is put something in place, they called controls, to get it from a higher risk level down to a lower risk level. So these four things are actually about risks and being able to find them, quantify them, categorize them, figure out how to treat them. So this is actually about, this is where you will spend the majority of your time, is actually in these four areas. Okay, the last two chapters that we have talked about, the one uh, last on the risk register and the risk monitor, these are about how you manage the risk and how you actually manage the program. So the risk register is the best management tool that they've come up with. Think of a, spread, a basic Excel spreadsheet with the rows and columns, rows being a risk, and the columns being all the information that you want in there to manage that risk. And remember, risk, owner is the most important entry in there. Who's responsible for making that risk go from a higher level to a lower level? And the last piece, we sort of talked about the risk life cycle and the fact you have to monitor all the stages of this life cycle. And uh, as I always say, rinse and repeat. You must rinse and repeat constantly. We're constantly finding new risks. Reviewing or monitoring how the stuff we put in place is actually working. You know, all of this risk is literally, it's an expense for your organization. 
So obviously we're trying to be the best stewards of our resources, resources being time, people, and money, the best stewards of the resources for our organization. So we want to address these in the most cost-effective manner possible, just basic business sense. Rinse and repeats, constantly looking at things to make sure we can do, can we do them better? Can we do them uh, more cost effective? Is something we put in not working like we thought it was going to? You need to find that out right away. You don't want to assume that a, a control you put in place just fixed everything. You actually have to test it and make sure. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. And if you've watched this entire video series, uh, outstanding. You can go back and watch the previous chapters, uh, and these will obviously be available online, so you'll be able to go back and review them again and again if you need to. Uh, thank you very much for coming.